Independent eyewear brands make undoubtedly the best quality frames. And that's why it's so concerning that in recent years, some of the biggest, some of the best independent eyewear brands have been bought out. Most recently, the Louis Vuitton Group purchased Barton Pereira for $80 million. And if you think that's a lot of money, wait until you hear about the Maui Gym acquisition. So in today's video, we're going to be exploring whether that is a good or a bad thing and what it means for independent eyewear in general. Hi, I'm Robert, Style and Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And part of getting the perfect pair of glasses, part of the research that I do behind the scenes is in the origin of those glasses. It's crucial to know the quality, not just the quality, but also the long-term service that you'll expect to receive with your luxury frames. But also I think there's a philosophy of purchasing from a company that is inherently passionate about what they do and not just out for money. And with handcrafted glasses that originate from people who just want to make glasses and have no other intentions, for me, there's a certain purity to that. And therefore, this has been a sad few years because as I mentioned, some of the biggest eyewear brands are being bought out. It all started, the first domino that toppled, let's say, was Limburg. And Limburg, very famous, very historic Danish eyewear brand who really carved out their own niche in minimalistic frames. And I've talked about Limburg a few times on this channel about how I feel like they kind of stagnated, they really reached the top, they reached the peak, and then didn't really progress from there as other eyewear brands continue to improve and, and caught up. And a perfect example of that, which I reference all the time, are Reykjavik Eyes. This frame from Reykjavik Eyes, which is the Surtsey, is better than any Limburg frame they ever produced. I can say that confidently because they are just as minimalistic and beautiful in their construction, beautifully elegant and simple, while being incredibly durable, stronger than any Limburg frame, more comfortable in my experience and my opinion than any Limburg frame, and in a way, a bit more unique. And that's why I have described Limburg as overrated. Not that they make bad quality frames, they make excellent quality frames, but they aren't the be all and end all of minimalistic glasses. And they're certainly not even the best anymore. It's going to be really interesting to see if Kering, a huge company who own brands like Gucci, Chloe, Cartier, etc., can really reinvigorate and revitalize Limburg as a brand because there is no doubt that they are a huge player in the market. But it was fascinating to see an independent family owned and very resilient and very established eyewear brand like Limburg being purchased by a big company like Kering. But Kering weren't finished there because one of the biggest ever eyewear acquisitions was just around the corner, Maui Gym. The third biggest eyewear brand in the world after Ray-Ban and Oakley. And we both know that Ray-Ban and Oakley nowadays have been destroyed by Luxottica. So Maui Gym are really the only one in the top three that actually make amazing quality sunglasses. And there've been rumors ever since Maui Gym got to that level that they were gonna be purchased by Luxottica. Luxottica obviously by every successful eyewear brand, whether it's Ray-Ban, Oakley or Oliver Peoples, as well as holding the license for so many fashion brands like Prada, Chanel, Ralph Lauren, Coach, most recently Jimmy Choo, the list goes on and on. But none of those brands are really like Maui Jim. Again, a family owned, established eyewear brand who you really never felt would sell out. And Kering purchased Maui Jim for $1.6 billion. 1.6 billion. Yes, you heard that right. And in a way, that is a reflection on the market itself and it's actually a compliment to independent eyewear and the fact that it is becoming more of a mainstream thing. Many people now are looking to brands like Maui Gym, like Limburg, like Barton Pereira, where before they might have looked to Prada or Ray-Ban. So why did they finally agree to sell to Kering? Well, part of it might be to spite Luxottica. They'd seen what Luxottica had done to brands like Ray-Ban, brands like Oakley, where they'd really taken them from being ultra high quality eyewear brands to real trash quality eyewear brands while increasing the profits more and more. No one wants to see that happen to a brand that stands for quality like Maui Gym. And Maui Gym are exceptional quality with arguably the best sun lenses in the world. So in what way were Kering supposed to enhance that? Well, Kering do know fashion. That is one thing that you definitely cannot argue about, Kering no fashion like nobody else. And that is where Maui Gym had always been lacking. Now this is the Alika and it's one of the first new styles to come out of the Kering ownership of Maui Gym. And I have to say, if this is a sign of things to come, I am incredibly impressed because this takes Maui Jim's quality and turns it into a package that is actually stylish for the first time. This is probably the first pair of Maui Jim sunglasses where I've said, wow. They are on the level of brands like Barton Pereira, like RLM, when it comes to 
actual style. And that is really what we needed to see from Maui Jim to really take them to that next level. And on the flip side of that, we might see Maui Jim lenses making an appearance in fashion brands like Gucci, like Cartier. That would be really interesting to see as a kind of collaboration. With everything being under one roof, it is a possibility. And I'm quite intrigued to see what will happen. Now, a lesser known eyewear brand that have also been purchased recently are IC Berlin. IC Berlin were, as the name suggests, a really pioneering eyewear brand from Germany with a very industrial, very utilitarian look and feel. They were the first glasses actually made from stainless steel sheets without the use of any screws. So that was an amazing new concept at the time back in the late 90s. And IC Berlin, despite being quite pioneering, have always remained somewhat niche. This year they had roughly 100 employees and still produced everything in their facility in Berlin, which is a good thing. And niche eyewear brands like that, who are producing glasses in very small quantities, are generally at the cutting edge and generally make, in my opinion, the best quality. But even relatively niche brands like IC Berlin are now being bought out. Markelin, who are the producers of Tom Ford glasses <laughs> and other <laughs> terrible frames, have actually acquired IC Berlin, which is really surprising because you know their traditional business model has been to make money from licensed brands like Tom Ford with very high margins thanks to the low production costs. So it's gonna be very fascinating to see what they do with IC Berlin, will they just leave it alone as its own separate entity and they just take the profit from it? Or will they try to get involved and try and make it more commercial, which usually means lowering the quality, increasing the price. Their focus always has to be on pleasing shareholders on turning a profit and not necessarily re-engineering, reinventing how glasses work. Which is why I'm such a fan of Luca de Stael, who literally handcrafts his frames in his workshop in Paris. I took you on a tour of that earlier this year. And his subsidiary brand, Industrial, make frames which are more utilitarian and more functional, like IC Berlin. If you want that typical IC Berlin look, which is very Germanic, very structured, very angular, Industrial frames have that look with the exception that these are hingeless frames, which again, like the Reykjavik eyes, means incredible flexibility. Again, made from steel. The one thing that is really innovative about Luca's industrial series is the rubberized temples. Number one, they give really good grip without having to hook behind the ears. Number two, these are actually interchangeable. So you can swap out that color for red, blue, green, whatever your heart desires. But a lot of people like that semi-sporty, semi-technical look. And brands like IC Berlin, brands like Mykita, and brands like Industrial do that really well. But by supporting a brand like Industrial, you are supporting someone who is a fully independent manufacturer and not paying money to a huge corporation. And now finally, onto the big news of the moment, Barton Pereira purchased by Louis Vuitton. For me and many others, that was a huge shock, particularly if you know the history of the company because Barton Pereira were founded by Bill Barton and Patty Pereira who left Oliver Peoples when they were purchased by Luxottica. And they have always stood for independent eyewear design. That's what I thought they represented. I thought they were the personification of that philosophy. Now selling to Louis Vuitton and their own eyewear subsidiary, which is called Thelios, which kind of sounds like an evil company just in itself, doesn't it? Is maybe not quite as bad as selling to Luxottica, but it's still very disappointing. That doesn't mean that I blame Bill Barton or Patty Pereira for making $80 million. I think many people, if not most, if they were in that position, would take the money. But it's still sad to see because they have been one of the champion brands of independent eyewear. The fact that they left the Oliver Peoples group when it was acquired, the fact that they did things differently, they wanted to just go back to basics with classic styles, but making them at the highest level of quality possible. Each Barton Pereira frame is handmade in Japan. This is the Donnelly and it is an exceptional quality frame, one of the best you can buy, full stop. The sides are filigree detailed titanium. The front is the Cabernet acetate. It's a really intriguing acetate, one that is very unique and unusual, but quite wearable and versatile as well. The Donnelly was a design that only came out this year, just like their Rimless series. So Barton Pereira have been innovating and have been coming out with new designs and new concepts. So I really didn't feel like they were at the end of their creative journey, but it seems like they might be. Albeit that Bill Barton and Patty Pereira are still working for Barton Pereira, they just don't own the company anymore. Whether that means that they'll just be figureheads or whether they will actually have a personal level of involvement remains to be seen. But it's certainly a sign of the times and a sad one at that. 
because what the world doesn't need are massive companies who are trying to monopolize the eyewear market. Now, I do have much less of a problem with companies like Kering, with companies like Louis Vuitton, because at the end of the day, they still make exceptional quality frames. And I think that they will probably leave Barton Pereira well alone. But it'll be interesting to see if Louis Vuitton take Barton Pereira and want to change the identity of the brand. I suspect they won't, but just knowing that they don't any longer have complete creative freedom is a little bit sad. But on a more positive note, there are still many, many, many amazing independent eyewear brands out there, and I'll be showcasing most of them on this channel. So make sure to subscribe. And if you have enjoyed this video, give us a like. I would be very interested to hear your thoughts on all of these acquisitions that we've talked about today. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye bye.